Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my Alpha ABS video tutorial. This is part two. Um, if you missed part one, definitely make sure you check that out because it will show you how to install the ABS into your game as well as how to configure the um, plugin parameters to fit your liking, um, you know, to how you want it to work for your game. Before we actually do jump into this um, tutorial, there's a couple of websites I do want you guys to take note of. The first website, well not really website, but the first, I'm going to leave them all the links down below for you guys in the description, but this is the documentation for the Alpha ABS, so anything that I miss in these tutorials will be covered in the documentation and it is kind of actually pretty detailed. And these are the things that um, that I actually looked over when I was setting up my whole um, ABS. So this is what taught me how to actually use the system. So it will tell you every single step that you need to know in order to set it up. And then another one will be, um, again, pertaining to the same thing. This will kind of show you some stuff that this one doesn't show you. So for example, if you go down to script information, it will show you all the script calls that you could do, all the ABS parameters for enemies, and it's all laid down for you in a you know reasonable fashion. So again, these are all the stuff that I, 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 ha I actually have them bookmarked so I could get to them easily because I look at these like literally every day while I'm working on my games and with the actual ABS. So if you guys remember from the last time, this is exactly where we left off. Um, the reason why it says this is because in order to actually get the ABS to work, you have to go into your database menu and then your skills, your skill number one, you have to change it to, again, you could leave everything default, but you do have to add this little node tag. Um, well, no, not, I mean, you could literally leave this as ABS zero and it should work, but let me actually pull this up back to here. Uh, so, but pretty much we just also need this line right here. And again, I'm going to be telling you exactly what all of that means in a little bit. But for right now, let me just add it to my game. Apply. Okay. Okay. So now that we actually got the ABS to start working on our game, um, the other thing that you do have to take note of is in order to make your map enabled for the ABS you would have to come into the map properties and type in um, ABS and don't forget these um, those things um, before and after the ABS now this map is enabled for the ABS if we actually play this game now we should be able to see um, the HP bars, the skill bars, and all the HUD stuff. So now that we have that set up with the map and everything, let's go back into the database. In order to set up your skills, your items, and your weapons, you would have to assign them a type, right? Um, and that's where ABS0 comes in. Um, if you notice, we had it um, on attack, which is skill ID 1, and we had ABS0. So that's just the skill type. So the different types are instant, vector, circle, and zone. Um, and I'm going to be going in game to show you what those actually do. But um, instant is pretty much like regular attacks that attack an enemy that's right in front of them. Or um, something that heals the user. Or an action that's performed on the user. Or an enemy that's right in front of the user. Right? So pretty much that could either be like a regular sword attack that attacks the enemy right in front of you. Or it could be you using a healing item to heal yourself, um, a buff to buff yourself, or um, an item to uh, attack an enemy, or to heal the enemy, or whatever you want to do. Um, so as long as it's either yourself or the enemy that's right in front of you. I'm gonna kind of drew a picture here, which is like the first one. The square is you, the circle is the enemy. So you could either have it just work on yourself or you could have it work on the enemy that's like right next to you. Vector is pretty much all um, projectiles, so your fireballs or any sort of projectile. Again, the square is you and this line is you shooting something at the enemy and the circle again is the enemy. Circle is AOE, area of attack. So if you take a look at this diagram right here at the bottom left, the square is you and the other square-ish looking thing is pretty much the attack that you're doing and the circles around the square-ish thingy is the enemies being hit by it because again it's an area of effect zone is pretty much this one all the way to the right 
So zone will be like in Skyrim when you when you do a fire spell and it hits all the enemies that's in front of the user um, in the cone. So again, depending on what you want to do, you would put ABS zero. Actually, let me. So you will put ABS zero all the way down to three for the four different types. The other thing that you do have to take note is in order to get these to work with. I mean, on the map, you have to set occasion to battle screen. If it does, if you don't have it set to battle screen, it's not going to work. Um, but just for now, just know we have instant, vector, circle, and zone. So if we actually go into the game, I could kind of show you what all of those kind of look like. So instant will be you just doing your regular attack. See, you're attacking the enemy. Um, this one will be vector, so it's shooting the fireball. Uh, this one will be what is this? So circle is the AOE. So I don't actually have to be uh, facing the enemy or anything like that. If I do it around the enemy, he will get hit. And then the cone, which is the, f I mean the zone, which is the five. As long as it's in front of the enemy, I'll be able to hit them. Just like that. Right. So those are the different um, types. So yeah, these are the different per, um, perimeters that you could use for all your different um, skills. So you have your range. So for example, if you're doing a projectile, you could set how far the projectile shoots. Um, so range pretty much works with like vector. Um, it also works with circle, I believe, and cone, but I don't think it works with instant. Cast time is pretty much how long it will take you to cast the spell. Reload time is how long it will take after you've cast the spell or the skill or the attack. Um, so let's say you cast a spell, right? It's going to take you two seconds to cast and then the spell will actually hit. And then it has to reload in order for you to do it all over again. So that's where reload time comes in. Reload perimeter is the same thing as reload time, but reload time is pretty much a a defined amount of time that will pass in order for you to reload and the reload perimeter will all pretty much depend on the user stats so for example if we open up their heart and we go to my regular attack as you can see I'm using a reload perimeter so that's based off of my attack speed of the user and also um, my agility divided by four. So the higher my agility, agility is, the faster I attack. Um, now I could also just put reload time and then make it 30 frames and then every 30 frames the attack will be ready for me to use again. Um, so you could kind of interchange those. Um, if, that's if that confuses anyone, let me know and I'll, I'll try to clarify it. Start sound is pretty much once you start the action. For example, if you hit, you could have a sword um, sound, you know, play. Um, if you shoot a bow, you could have a bow sound play. Cast animation is pretty much what animation will play when, you know, when you're casting the spell or whatever. Again, this kind of breaks it down into detail to actually show you what this all, you know, do. If I'm not explaining that right, you could also come here and just read about it, which will be the most helpful thing that anyone could ever do. Um, and then if you come down here on the documentation where it says ABS skill scope settings, it will kind of show you what, um, how those different types will behave based on the scope, right? So instant works with one enemy and it also works with the user. So this will um, affect the target and this one will affect you, the player. Um, vector, ABS, um, always have it set to one enemy on target. Um, um, circle, you could either have it on one where you would actually select the enemy um, that you want and then it's going to um, affect that area. Again, I'll show you in game um, in a little bit. Uh, scope is pretty much all enemies, so it will just attack all the enemies around you. Um, and then zone will always be set to all enemies. Um, and then again, these are the different perimeters that work for the different um, ABS types. So direction fix only works with ABS zero, vec, uh, and then it's gonna attack the enemy that's on the same line versus like, let's say if the enemy is like a little bit over, if direction fix is on, you won't actually be able to hit them. It will have to be directly in front of the player. Uh, 
radius works with circles and the radius is pretty much um, how big the circle is around the player when they use the skill um, speed is how fast the actual um, attack happens if so if, for example if it's a fireball and you set the speed to extremely high the fireball will get from the user to the enemy in like two seconds versus five seconds uh, and then if you put radius it will just turn the the vector um, the fireball into an area of effect kind of thing the image pretty much sets what image you want to use for that um, for that fireball or whatever um, kind of spell it is so if you have a fireball image you would then put this there so for example if we go into and we go down to vector so whenever we shoot the um, whenever we use this skill this is the image that actually shows up in game uh, and then also what I want to do so I want to do circle 2 actor skills skill circle 2 just kind of show you that one so this is what happens when you have um, So whenever you have, um, instead of having it set to all, if you have the circle set to one enemy, it actually gives you this selector where you could select where you want the attack to happen. Um, and if it's red, it's out of range or you can't use it there. So if I actually move up, do that. See, it's going to attack all the enemies around that circle that you put and it will let you select where the circle is. Um, versus, you know, just having it work like that around the player. Um, so yeah, that's that, let's see what else, alright, so some other things that I, you do have to take note of, so some of the um, perimeters in the actual uh, RPG Maker system can be used to indirectly change the uh, ABS perimeter, so they could actually affect the range cast time and um, cast time and some other stuff like that so it kind of shows you a diagram here of what each of those individual um, settings are that will change these as well but I do want you to take note of this one you see where it says repeat that doesn't change your range so for example if you put six repeat it's not gonna your fireball won't go six tiles away it's actually gonna hit the enemy six times so the range will still be that this will be the default if you do, if you don't change it here in the note tags and it will just instead hit the enemy six times um, so that actually what it's saying here isn't accurate at all um, cast time though is accurate so you could use speed for cast time but you cannot use repeat for range um, and we already went through these uh, we'll get to that later okay so pretty much um that uh so moving on from skills um let's go ahead and talk about the weapons and um how they're a little bit different from the skills now keep in mind that as long as your weapon is using the default um skill which is zero for their i mean one which is the default for their attacks you don't really have to change that much for weapons the main thing that you have to change for example, if your um, if you have this reload perimeter is set to attack speed, all this really means is um, how fast the the attack or the weapon that you're using reloads depends on the attack speed. So if I go to actor and I add 400 attack speed, that means every 400 frames the player would perform an attack. Every 400 frame attack. Every 400 frame attack. Uh, let's set that to 60 so it's not extremely actually let's set that to 240 right and then weapons all you literally have to do for here is make sure you set abs to zero if it's a melee um, weapon or abs one if it's a ranged weapon like bows and the crossbows and whatnot right so uh, let me see here and also weapons don't support cast time at all it's not supported at all and if you're using ABS one for weapons, you can't use radius, turning it into um, 
an AOE because again, it's a bow. Um, it's meant for bows and guns and stuff like that. So again, you can only use ABS zero or ABS one melee range, right? Um, and then the other real perimeter that you do have to set is the attack speed. So what I normally do for my games, based on um, if it's a sword or a whip, um, if it's a sword, um, an axe. Actually, let me pull this up here to kind of show you guys better. So if I go to weapon, I have different weapon types, right? So my daggers are always the fastest. So all they do is modify my attack speed, making it faster. See, as you can see right here, I have ABS zero, and then I have it modify my attack speed. So whenever you have a dagger equipped, it's gonna take your overall um, attack speed, which is 100, and it's going to subtract that from it. So it's gonna subtract 60. So you're actually hitting 40 frames per second. And then bows is minus 40. Let me see, maces is minus 30, which is the slowest attack speed. And you know, daggers are obviously the fastest attack speed. Um, and I also do have that little modifier here. So it's not just based off your attack speed. It's based off your attack speed and your agility um, divided by four. And then also one last thing to take note, also keep in mind that most of these perimeters that will work for um that will work for skills and stuff like that will also for example range range um image will also work for um the different weapons that you make so for example if we go back to the game and if actually go back to their heart if you look at my bows you will also see that the bows have uh, abs one and they also have a range of 12. Um, and they also have an image that shows the arrow and they also do a start sound of bow, right? You know, that's all you really have to worry about now. And also, if you are making bows or guns or whatever, um, you do have to add, the, add in this um, special um, tag, which is ammo and then the item ID. So as long as the player has this item ID in their inventory, they'll be able to use this bow. And if I go to item and you see arrow, it's item number one, and that's all that does. Um, that's if you want to have projectiles and stuff that actually cost ammo and whatever or whatnot. All right, so now let's move on to items now that we're done with weapons and whatnot. So items, again, they're all, it kind of shares the same um, basic idea. You could use the different types for your items. Um, well, zero and one, those are the ones that I'm sure that you could use. I'm not sure about circle or cones, but you could definitely use one and zero. So normally what I do, um, I usually set it to zero and then I just use it for my, you know, healing items and whatnot, um, my buffs and um, all those other stuff. So all you have to do is set it to ABS zero, leave everything the way that you, I mean, set up everything the way that you want it, but always make sure you have ABS zero. Now you could also do ABS one. And you could actually like you know you could make grenades or like items that actually attack enemies and whatnot um it doesn't only have to be with abs one you could also have items that attack enemies with abs zero you just have to set it that way but yeah that's pretty much it for this episode so we talked about how to set up items um skills and weapons in the next episode we're pretty much going to be talking about how to set up um enemies and states um and then we're gonna do maybe a couple more episodes to kind of like bring everything into a full circle and kind of like show you guys um how to kind of set up the more advanced stuff and you know all that other cool stuff if you guys have any uh questions that you want to ask me um or anything you want me to explain in further detail definitely leave a comment down below or send me a message or something like that and i'll definitely respond to it as soon as i see it um make sure you you know if you have any general comments or anything like that leave it down below if you like the video hit the thumbs up button if you dislike the video thumbs down let me know what you guys think um also make sure to subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more videos coming up more tutorials uh let's make an open world rpgs coming up um i'm still trying to decide whether if i want to do it on their heart if i want to start a brand new game just for the let's make an open world rpg so that I don't know yet. I'm still kind of deciding it. The only main reason why I don't want to um, do it with their heart is because their heart is like, um, you know, halfway done. 
so I don't want to just jump into the game while it's halfway done. Um, I want to kind of show you guys all the different things that we, we've done, um, you know, from scratch and everything versus having to explain it to you guys. Um, I'd rather do it as I explain it versus just going over everything all over again. But yeah, I'm still kind of deciding. Um, again, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys again for watching. Peace.